This video will go over how to use the Family Tree Excel Extract Workbook version 2. The Extract Workbook is a standalone Excel file that uses macros to allow you to easily compile all the index data of image records from both Ancestry.com and FamilySearch.org into an Excel table. In the table, you can then filter, sort, and analyze all the data. With this workbook, you can bypass all the formatting and adjustments that would be required if you did this process manually, allowing you to exponentially increase the speed and amount of data extracted. The Extract Workbook is a helpful research tool to give you a deeper understanding of source records, help break down brick walls, and bring to life your ancestors' communities, friends, and associates. You can obtain this workbook at FamilyTreeExcel.com. The workbook will be delivered via a zip file immediately upon purchase. Once downloaded, just extract the file from the zip folder to anywhere on your computer. It will come with the Extract Workbook and a Help Guide PDF. The Extract Workbook is a macro-enabled Excel file, so be sure to enable editing and content upon opening to ensure the workbook works correctly. When you first open the Extract Workbook, you will begin on the Record Worksheet. This is the only worksheet you will be working on. At the top of the page, you will find eight options. Paste, Analyze, Export, Delete, Reset, New, Help, and Source. Each of these will be discussed in more detail later. Also, you will find green and blue fields that will be populated automatically when you add data. The green fields consist of the following. The number of image pages, which is a running total of how many image pages you have added so far. The number of people is how many rows of data were extracted. The filtered total is how many rows are displayed when a filter is in place and the image number, which is a running list of all the page numbers you have added so far. If you try to add a duplicate page, you will be alerted and you can proceed accordingly. These green fields should not be modified directly. The blue fields consist of record, which will display the record source and title, location, which should show where the record is based, and source, this will be Ancestry.com or FamilySearch.org by default. This information depends on the record and the website details. You can modify these blue cells to your liking at any time during the process. Finally, you will see a red line going across row number 7. This row should not be modified in any way to avoid errors. All data will be inserted below this line. In order to keep the functionality of the workbook, be sure not to do any of the following. Modify any of the eight options at the top of the page. Modify any of the green cells at the top of the page. Rename the record worksheet. Unhide any backup worksheets. Insert any new worksheets. Or modify row number seven in any way. To begin, First, you should determine what site you will be extracting the index data from. This workbook will only work with either Ancestry.com or FamilySearch.org. The gold source button at the top of the record sheet must match the site you are extracting data from. You can click this button to switch between sites. You will also see the label of the paste button change so you know what site you currently have selected. You cannot switch sources after you have added data without erasing the existing data. So be sure you have the source of your choice selected before proceeding. Please note that a subscription to Ancestry.com or an account with Family Search, which is free, is required in order to view their respective images and indexes. Ancestry.com indexes are usually far more detailed than Family Search. So that will be used as the primary example going forward. To extract the index data from Ancestry.com, you first need to enter the View Image section of a record. Note that not all of the records have the View Image option. Once inside the Image Viewer, 
make sure the header details are displayed at the top in order for the process to work. If your window size is too small, the headers will disappear and an error will occur when you try to paste the data later. Navigate to the page you want to start extracting data from. To do so, you can use the arrows or enter the page number at the bottom. You can extract the data in any page order, but best practice is to go in numerical order. Once you are on the desired image page, click on the person button to open the index pane for the image. With the index pane and image headers visible, use Control A on your keyboard to select all the page. You must select the entire page for this to work. So the keyboard shortcut of Control A is the best way to achieve this. With the entire page selected, then use the Control C keyboard shortcut to copy all the data. Now that all the page data is copied, go back to the Extract Workbook and click on the green Paste button. Instantly, all the index data of that image will be formatted and added to a table. A pop-up will alert you that the image number was added, and the green and blue field should populate with their respective data. To add more information, go back to Ancestry.com, navigate to the next page of your choice. Once on the new page, the data should remain highlighted. So now you just have to hit Control C on your keyboard to copy the new page. If for some reason the page is not highlighted anymore, then be sure to use the Control A option first. With the new data copied, go back to the Extract Workbook, click on Paste again, and the table and fields are now all updated with the new information. You can then repeat this process of going to a new image page, making sure all the data is highlighted, then copying all the data, then clicking on Paste, for as many image indexes as you desire. Once you get a hang of it, you can extract about 12 pages a minute. If you copy anything by mistake and try to paste, the workbook will catch it and let you know something went wrong. This will preserve your data from being ruined by a mistake. If you get this error, be sure the index pane was showing, the entire page was selected, and then the entire page was copied then try again. You can see the troubleshooting section later if a problem persists. Once you have all the data you want extracted, you now have the following options to choose from. Clicking the Analyze button will open a form showing you all the unique values and their count for every category of the data. Depending on the record you extracted, you can now see the neighborhood broken down by gender, race, occupation, surname, birthplace, and so on, giving you a deeper understanding of where your ancestor was living at the time. You can click on any of the headers to sort that information in ascending or descending order. You can also click on a list item, then choose Filter. This will automatically filter the table to that selection. You can click Export to export the list to a new Excel workbook. This is helpful if you wanted to create charts or add additional data to expand your research. The last option is to clear any filters. This will restore the table to show all the data. Next, you can use the normal Excel data filters and sort options. This is a powerful tool that allows you to analyze the data in any way that you wish. These filters allow multiple criteria to be used to really get specific results. For example, say your ancestor was 13 at the time of the record. You could then filter the data to show everyone in the neighborhood between the ages of 10 and 16. This could help you find their potential childhood friends that may be seen in old photos or allow you to discover new contact leads of people that may have details on your ancestors. You can see the Excel section later for helpful filtering tips. Next, you have the option to export the table to a new Excel workbook. 
clicking this will only export the visible rows in the table. This allows you to create a more specific table that you can modify however you please. So if you only wanted a table with everyone with their surname starting with S, you could filter by that, then click export. And now you have a new table with only the S surnames. If addresses are listed, you can even use filtered versions to upload to Google Maps, giving you a visual example of the neighborhood and locations. All the other page options are self-explanatory. Clicking Delete Page will allow you to delete a specific image page's data from the table. So if an image record was added by mistake or was not useful, you can use this to remove that specific data without starting over. The Reset button will erase all the data in the table. The New button will allow you to create a new blank extract workbook. This will not affect the current workbook. And finally, the Help button will take you to this video in case you get stuck at any point. Extracting data from Family Search follows the same process as Ancestry.com does, with only a few small changes. To extract data from Family Search, first switch over to the Family Search Source option by clicking the gold button at the top of the page. Note that this will erase any existing table data you have. Then on the Family Search website, open the Desired Records Image Viewer. Once again, only the records on the website that have this option will be able to be extracted. In the Image Viewer, make sure the index pane is visible. Navigate to the image page of your choice. Then use Control A on the keyboard to select the entire page. One caveat for Family Search is to make sure your cursor is not over the navigational arrows when selecting the entire page. This messes with the format that will create an error when trying to paste. You can see the troubleshoot section later for more details on this. With the entire page selected, use Control C to copy the page. Then click Paste on the Extract Workbook. Again, instantly all the data is formatted and added to an Excel table. Family Search's index columns are usually far less detailed than Ancestry, but still can provide useful information to analyze. Also, their record details are usually not broken down by location like Ancestry so you will likely have to change the blue field yourself. To add another image page details, go back to Family Search, navigate to the next image page, then make sure your cursor does not hover over the arrows. Also make sure the index data is fully loaded before selecting anything. You will notice Family Search does not keep the data highlighted like Ancestry.com does. So you have to use Control A to highlight the entire page again. With the entire page highlighted, then press Control C to copy the data, then click on Paste. You can repeat this process as many times as you like. You will then have the same analysis options as previously discussed with the Ancestry.com records. The main error in the Extract Workbook is a Something Went Wrong error. If you try to paste something that is not in the expected format of Ancestry.com or Family Search's Image Index, then you will get an error message that something went wrong. To prevent any damage to existing data, nothing will be added to the table if this occurs, so you do not have to worry if this happens. If you do get this error, then try the following to resolve it. Make sure the gold source button is set to the website you are trying to extract data from. On the website, make sure the index pane is visible in the image viewer. For Ancestry.com records, make sure the headers are visible in the window. For Family Search records, Make sure your cursor is not hovering over the navigational arrows. Make sure the index data is fully loaded. 
Then select all the image details using Control A. Then copy all the data using Control C. Then try to paste again. Another possible error is an index match error. Sometimes the amount of columns in Ancestry.com's indexes changes from image page to image page. For example, image 1 may have 10 columns of data and image 2 may have 12 columns of data. If this happens, only the data from the columns that already exist in your data table will be extracted. Any additional data that was in the new index will be omitted. This is not a common occurrence and usually only one or two columns of data is the difference. Best practice is to eyeball the records before extracting. You will want to add the image index that has the most columns visible first. That way you will not lose any extracted information despite getting this error message. If you get this error more than a few times, then it's likely you extracted the oddball index first. I would recommend starting over, then using the more common index setup first to prevent the error message from popping up over and over. After identifying the different index headers, you can then also add or subtract table columns manually to make the index formats match. Another possible error is that you have duplicate information in your table with family search images. In a census, when families cross over two pages, sometimes family search will list the entire family on both the first page and then again on the second page's index. So if you extract the same record from Ancestry and Family Search, you will likely get a different total of people. If you look at the table data when the image number changes, you can identify the duplicates. Unfortunately, the only way to address this is by manually deleting these rows. You can use the sort and filter options to help you assist in that process. The last major issue that you may come across is that the data extracted does not match the image that you're looking at. The header columns and data that is extracted is based entirely on the respective website's selected index. Therefore, any errors in spellings, what information is provided, what information is filled out, is all based on that site's transcriptions and index format for that record. This workbook only extracts the index data to an Excel table, so transcription errors are not something that can be addressed on Family Tree Excel's end. These sites have millions of records, so transcription errors are quite common. Manual inspection of the images to confirm the accuracy of what was transcribed is the only recourse if you suspect an error. Filtering, sorting, and other Excel features will be able to assist in identifying and correcting any major transcription errors. These are just a list of some helpful Excel tips and keyboard shortcuts that may come in handy with the Extract Workbook. These shortcuts are all Windows based. I am not sure of the Mac versions, but usually you just replace the Control button with the Command button. Control A is the keyboard shortcut to select all the data on a page. Control C is the keyboard shortcut to copy any selected data. Control X is a keyboard shortcut to cut the selected data. This removes the data and copies it at the same time. Control V is the keyboard shortcut to paste any copied data. Please note that you must use the green paste button in the extract workbook to insert copied image details. Control Shift Down Arrow is a keyboard shortcut to take you to the last used cell in that column. This allows you to quickly navigate to the end of your table. Control Shift Up Arrow takes you back to the top of the table. Control D 
is a keyboard shortcut to fill in the selected cells with whatever value and format is in the first cell above them. This can be used when an image index only has the family number or street address for the heads of households. Simply highlight the cells underneath, then press Ctrl D to automatically fill in that information for the remaining family members. Ctrl Z is a keyboard shortcut to undo your last action. Note that this shortcut cannot be used after a macro is run. Clicking on any of the buttons in the Extract Workbook will run a macro so you cannot use Control z after clicking any of the buttons. After extracting all the image data that you want, you can then rename and arrange the table columns however you please. To rename a table column, just click on that header cell and type in what you want. To rearrange a table column, move the mouse by the header cell's intersection until the cursor changes to an arrow's cross. Then click and drag the column to your desired location in the table. To add your own custom columns to a table, right click on the table column header, then go to insert, then choose table column to the left. To delete a table column, right click on the column header, then choose delete table columns. To add a new row to the table, just begin typing below the last row, or click on the row number you want to add a row above, then hit the control plus sign on your keyboard. To remove a row, click on the row number you want to delete, then use the control minus sign on your keyboard. To filter data, you can enter the values in the search bar, then either select all the options or deselect all the options and then manually check the values you want to keep in the filter. If you only know the first letter of what you want, you can use that letter followed by the asterisk key. This will filter every value that begins with that letter. For example, S asterisk will filter to every value in that column beginning with S. You can also use the more complex text and number filters for things like between, contains, greater than, less than, and so on. Some Excel knowledge would help with using the Extract Workbook, but it is not required. This workbook, which may be intimidating at first, is quick to learn, and once you get the hang of it, this workbook can be used as a great research tool to make source records census records in particular, far more valuable than just a few facts about ancestors. If you have any questions not answered in this video, or if you want to add any custom features or anything else, please contact Mike at FamilyTreeExcel at gmail.com or comment below. You can also check out the other YouTube videos in FamilyTreeExcel.com for additional Excel workbooks and PDF files that can assist with your family tree journey.